Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I mean, I know a lot of you guys are probably worried about uh, your portfolios. I did an extensive video this morning about the crypto market, what we are to expect next, reasons why we're seeing, uh, you know, the market behave as we are. And, uh, you know, just to kind of put a cap on it, uh, Subjective Views did point this out. Okay, the trade five players or trad five players are getting into crypto while you are getting out. I mean, if you guys are worried about uh, your portfolio, obviously, uh, you know, we're seeing the fear and greed index here at 38. So a lot of people, I'm sure, uh, in the crypto space, maybe a lot of people watching this video are already out or thinking about, uh, you know, leaving crypto right now. Boy, is it a bad time. I mean, uh, you know, the market is bleeding. However, this is the time you do the exact opposite, accumulate more cryptocurrencies, potential high flyers, altcoins with potential value. Maybe you want to accumulate some more Bitcoin uh, because this, guys, this is what's actually happening in the space. They are playing chess, not checkers, courtesy of subjective views. Listen to this. The thing that will happen by this time next year is we will knock down this uh, really strict split between crypto native and TradFi. Uh, when you look at who are the challengers and who are really driving the crypto native ecosystem, you find legitimate institutions. You know, if you look at the yield bearing stable coins or tokenized money market funds, that yield is being generated in the spot US Treasury repo markets. So can we take someone that is issuing a crypto native brand new asset and tie its yield and its workflows into TradFi things like repo so that the creation redemption of this new asset is seamless relative to the risk markets that it's backed by. And so we'll use a lot of those new challenger ecosystems and their large TradFi participants to start to break down this really strict barrier between the two worlds and really leverage Canton to start to bridge the gap between them selectively where it makes sense and where it's advantageous for all the participants. So no, they're not leaving. They are doubling down. Uh, and this was from uh, that recent crypto conference, the uh, the Point Zero Forum. Okay, as you guys can see the background up there. So these guys are discussing real world utility, TradFi specifically, the cryptos that are going to make sense within this new financial framework. Cypress Domenicor here also mentioning the most recent crypto drop, and also you know kind of pointing in the same direction here. He says, "LOL, crypto is dropping." but crypto is far from dead. Pay attention and don't mess up this opportunity. Today, Visa just partnered with Tangem to integrate crypto wallets for secure payments. And people really think crypto is dead. If you can't stomach a pullback or even a further drop in price, sell. Crypto is clearly not for you. Zoom out and understand this market is still in its infancy. So what he's bringing up here is uh, Tangem connected to Ripple through this Visa partnership. Okay, Visa is now though integrating crypto wallets for secure payments. Check this out, guys. Self-custodial crypto wallets provider Tangem has developed a new wallet integrated directly through Visa. Tangem has partnered with Visa to introduce a new hardware wallet technology integrated with Visa's payment cards. The firm did announce just yesterday, July the 4th, the new business to customer product will be released under the Tangem brand and is expected to be launched by the end of the year. So the end of 2024, we're going to see these products. Ch uh, Tangem Chief Technology Officer did uh, tell, uh, tell Coin Telegraph, excuse me. He says, we received certification from Visa and a patent for the technology, and now we have developed a product that will soon be ready to present to the world. Our users will uh, get a two-in-one solution, the convenience of a regular bank card, and the capabilities of a self-custodial crypto wallet all in one card. Uh, he goes on to say, this is a significant step towards bridging the gap between traditional banking and digital assets, making it easier for everyday users to navigate and leverage the benefits of both worlds. So... Uh, combining the worlds, guys, combining cryptocurrency and regular payments is becoming more and more of a reality. While Tangem's wallet solution is self-custodial and can function with or without a seed phrase, Tangem Pay is based on smart contracts and comes with one card without a seed phrase. So that is uh, just a little bit about the back-end technology there. The firm aims to develop a platform that is now working on a software as a service solution that will let any wallet issue cards under their own brand. The technology is designed to uh, enable banks and add crypto solutions to their product lines and allow blockchains to become platforms for payments. Tangem Pay can be connected to any wallet like Meta mass ledger uh trust wallet so if you guys already do have one of those products uh that can um that can integrate with that already he also mentioned that there are no limitations to what cryptocurrencies would be supported so guys uh you know custody is going to be big a lot of these cryptocurrencies that have value um are going to be held more and more i think by people if they do realize they're going to need them so for cross-border payments for example holders might be holding more xrp if they do a lot of those uh cr cross-border transactions through this uh, type of technology 
And so this all just kind of goes to show you where the technology is going, where, uh, you know, companies, big payment companies like Visa's head is at when it comes to crypto technology. And so, you know, when we're hearing, you know, from uh, the big players, from, uh, you know, the big guys in the room, TradFi, they're getting in, they are not getting out. Crypto is emerging. The technologies are emerging, becoming more prevalent in society. These are all signs uh, that we should be getting excited and not scared that, uh, you know, the price of crypto today is dropping and that, uh, you know, fear, blood is in the streets. Uh-oh, uh-oh, right? Let's be positive, guys. Nobody said this was going to be a smooth ride. Uh, Michael Branch here also posted this. Ripple has introduced the Try It feature, guys, for its new payment API. So this is brand new. Coming from Ripple specifically, Ripple, a blockchain's payment company, has unveiled a new feature for its payments API called Try It. The new addition is designed to help developers by providing an interactive experience with the Ripple Payments API and other APIs. Moreover, it allows users to send simulated API requests and receive responses without needing to log in or provide authorization tokens. Uh, so how do they use it? The Triad it feature is accessible through the API documentations page for Ripple, and there's a, there's a link there. Uh, for their payments API, smart liquidation services API, and report service API. The interactive tool lets users test how specific endpoints respond in real time. And so here are just some of the uh, the tried features available. Visit the API reference page uh, to get more options there, and they give you a link. Click on the Try It button, open the security tab, and provide a string of value in the authorization field. Open the parameters tab and edit query parameters, and then click send. As easy as that. And uh, Chad Steingraber here also commenting on this new Ripple announcement. Ripple opens the payment service to anybody, guys. This is big. The interactive try it feature is available on the Ripple Payments API, Smart Liquidation Service API, and Report Service API reference documentation pages. The try it option allows any reader to send simulated packages, as we mentioned. So basically, you can develop mock requests here uh, and receive realistic responses without signing in or getting API credentials. Uh, so more of a test bed, it sounds as though. Developers who are getting started with their integration journey can learn more about the API from the reference documents as listed in that. Uh, that previous article here that I mentioned, but there's also a Ripple tweet here uh, linked in this. Uh, Chad Steingraber did uh, retweet this out, so I will link his tweet in the description of the video for you guys if you guys want to see what uh, what Ripple is doing when it comes to this new Try It feature. So brand new technology there, new services coming down the pike for Ripple. Wanted to thank Chad, of course, Michael Branch, and uh, Cypress Domenicor and Subjective Views just for posting that. Now. More integration with a prominent Ripple partner, guys, Temenos and Tech Mahindra have launched a new service on Temenos SAAS for EMIs to get faster to market. Check this out. Temenos today announced that it has signed an agreement with Tech Mahindra, a leading global provider for technology consulting and digital solutions, for Tech Mahindra to provide a core banking offering on Temenos SAAS, specifically designed for electronic money institutions. And guys, this is happening in the UK and Europe. By leveraging Temenos composable banking capabilities and Tech Mahindra services, EMIs will benefit from faster time to market, uh, lower operational costs, scalable uh, architecture, and access to over 100 curated Temenos Exchange fintech partners to offer customized and differentiated services to their end customers. This new offering on Temenos SAAS is designed to offer EMIs a cost-effective, scalable, and secure banking platform, enhancing their ability to launch operations uh, swiftly with a suite of pre-configured composable banking capabilities that cater specifically to the a uh, EMI sector. Uh, with features such as multi-currency accounts. So, uh, of course, looking to uh, streamline and make more efficient cross-border payments. Uh, they also talk about virtual uh, and physical cards, client, uh, client onboarding checks, domestic and international payments, orchestration and routing, transaction screening, and regulatory reporting. So all things that can be uh, facilitated over the blockchain. This service does facilitate dynamic scaling, cost efficiency, and sustainability. So, uh, you know, all these points directed to DLT technology and RippleNet integration. It also provides the flexibility to incorporate additional banking functionalities as EMIs evolve, supporting their growth and future proofing their operations. Of course, the interoperability is also, uh, you know, first and foremost for a lot of these uh, companies that want to get integrated. They know they're going to do it once, probably not uh, do it again for another several decades. So they want to do it right. And here they're using a company that they trust, Temenos, who has been in business for a very long time and has a Ripple connection. So great news here coming from the Temenos camp. I also happen to see this, guys, from Ripple partner SCB. Okay, SCB is to modernize their core banking system in partnership with Sunlight enhancing a better customer experience and full-fledged leadership in digital banking. 
So this just came out too. Siam Commercial Bank, which is a Ripple partner, continues to improve the banking experience. Its recent partnership with Sunline, a, gl uh, a leading global provider of banking technology service, aims to revamp IT architecture for SCB's core banking system modernization to deliver better financial transaction processing performances for deposits and loans with enhanced efficiency, stability, security, and scalability to cater to an ever-increasing number of transactions. So uh, they're realizing, you know, the transaction rate is going to ramp up, so they need to be prepared. The strategic partnership will enable SCB to quickly offer tailored financial solutions to individual customers and corporate clients to develop uh, the new core banking system is expected to take four years, uh, progressing towards SCB's leadership as a full-fledged digital banking entity. So uh, that is obviously uh, very important for them. There's some more information down here about that uh, with regards to uh, some of the people involved. Here's a quote. We are well aware of the changes in the financial landscape and customer behaviors in the digital age. So all these guys notice, uh, or they know at least that the financial system is changing. They do need to move on to DLT technology. Of course, SCB already a Ripple partner. So they already have a little bit of experience with this. Uh, they go on by saying this is reflected by the exponentially increasing volume of transactions. So that's the other thing, guys, as transactions become easier to conduct, you got to think about it when there's a lot of friction, not a lot of volume or not as much volume goes through uh, a lot of these banks. Chances are people will tend to hold back if uh, you know a transaction is not mandatory, if they're getting charged anywhere between 10 to 15% service fees. So with the streamlined approach and with lower service fees, that is, uh, at least it suggests to me that we are going to see larger volumes of transactions if transactions become easier to conduct. So that just bodes well for us XRP holders. If we do see more demand for transactions, just by the sheer fact that more transactions are going to occur, uh, let alone the fact that the population is uh, constantly growing around the world too. So uh, even just from a volume perspective of people conducting transactions, so that's going to increase, but also if transactions become easier to facilitate, more of them will increase per person. So you got to think of that inflow. Large volumes are going to occur once uh, this transformation is complete and these banks are already uh, realizing this. So they're saying increasing volume of transactions via digital channels combined with our confidence in the enormous potential of digital transformation that will help drive business growth and enhance the customer centric digital banking experience along with our digital bank with human touch strategy. This partnership between SCB and Sunline, a leading global provider of IT solutions for the banking industry is another key step for time Thailand's finance sector. So really kind of uh, ramping up Thailand's finance sector, making it seamless 24 seven. So some amazing news there coming out of Thailand's Siam Commercial Bank. Wouldn't it be fabulous if we could expect the same from our governments on this side of the pond? Chad Steingraber here posting this. Regulators have been informally guided to stop crypto for years under the Biden administration. So basically doing the exact opposite of what uh, other countries like Thailand are doing. Chad just bringing this up uh, as a note here, okay? So just remember, guys, when you go to the ballot box in November, the debanking effort has been building for years, okay? On November 18, 2021, the OCC issued informal guidance curtailing the ability of national banks and federal savings associations to engage with digital assets. This is a known fact, and it is uh, documented right here. In, in, interpretive le uh, letter 1179 clarified that despite earlier guidance permitting regulated banks to provide cryptocurrency custody services, uh, hold dollars dis uh, deposits serving as reserve backing. They are trying tooth and nail to thwart cryptocurrency adoption to really kind of put uh, you know stranglehold on us. Remember Choke Point 2.0? They wanted to limit on and off ramps for us to be able to access cryptocurrencies. Whereas, you know, the rest of the world is looking to adopt crypto solutions for the banking sector. It seems kind of backwards, does it not? This could change though, guys. And you know, anything could happen really, really fast. Michael Branch here bringing this to our attention. Okay, Wall Street analyst Linda Jones has indicated that Ripple could perform a similar role to the Federal Reserve in the emerging financial system. Now, recently I just did a video on Ripple basically replacing the Federal Reserve. There's been so much uh, to suggest that it could technology-wise, sociopolitically. I will link that video up here in the top right-hand corner for you. Uh, and Linda P. Jones just kind of, you know, piggybacks on that ideology. Uh, this discussion, though, focused on the BRICS coalition's efforts to break from the dollar standard and its potential impact on the U.S. economy. She asserted that the BRICS coalition is not against the U.S., but against central banks and a single currency dominant. So that's very important to note here, okay? BRICS countries, not, uh, you know, angry at the United States specifically, 
but definitely angry that they have to use the U.S. dollar. They don't want to use the U.S. dollar. She further stressed that the coalition opposes the Federal Reserve's control of the global economy through the U.S. dollar. As Jones speculated, a new U.S. currency might emerge, potentially backed by gold or other assets. Jones emphasized the need for a financial system supported by real assets, noting that the world uh, must move away from the fiat banking system that relies on the dollar. So, you know, this is where we get the idea of, uh, you know, a, a BRICS currency uh, supported by gold, perhaps other precious metals, other uh, other uh, commodities that uh, some of these other countries may hold, and perhaps a basket of their fiat currencies. The analyst predominantly advocates for a transition from a trust-based system managed by central banks to a truth-based system distinguished by transparency. So that's where the XRP ledger comes in. She also clarified that this change will not lead to uh, the failure of America and highlighted that Ripple, an American company, is at the front lines of this new system with the XRP ledger. So we already have all those connections, the banks, uh, the, the, the top brass, okay, everybody at the top, the connections to Ripple's board of directors, uh, Rosie Rios, Michael Barr, just to name a few big players, the connection to Ripple, the fact that it is American technology, the fact that it is already uh, integrated with many central banks around the world that are allies of the United States. She further underscored that the new currency cannot operate without accountability, contrasting Ripple with Bitcoin, of course. Uh, so there's some issues there. According to the analyst, the necessity for a known, transparent, audited, and accountable entity behind such a system was stressed as the criteria that Ripple meets. Jones also humorously added that Ripple could be seen as a new Federal Reserve, as I mentioned in uh, you know the video I did a few weeks ago. Still, she also noted that unlike the current Federal Reserve, Ripple is privately owned and will be publicly traded in the future. So that's uh, another thing to notice. Of course, when Ripple stocks do go on the market... I am going to be the first to buy it. Well, maybe not the first. I will wait for a retracement. Generally, when these IPOs occur, prices do get very overinflated. Uh, prime example is what we saw with Coinbase. I know I'm going a little off topic here, but I think it is uh, important to note here at the top of the market, April 2021, when Bitcoin hit that high and altcoins pretty much hit a high. This is when Coinbase launched their IPO, of course. Uh, we were in a bear market after that. Had I been interested in purchasing Coinbase at the time, I probably would have gotten in sometime in, uh, well, later 2022, probably the same time I got into my uh, Solana and HBAR positions for this rally in and around here. Uh, anyway, that's what we are seeing now. More arguments to suggest Ripple is the one that's going to be integrated into this new financial system. A lot of reasons why outlined there by Linda Jones, but wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Also happen to see this, guys, from Rob Cunningham. Okay, so Dear Crypto World, he says, If anyone might misunderstand why many, not all privately owned, for-profit central bankers permitted to operate behind a legal curtain of secrecy, absolutely despise Ripple and XRP, and will spare no expense to stop, defame, conduct lawfare, uh, use regulatory capture, and hire global armies of disinformation specialists to defame challengers to their legacy monopoly, please hear this European Commission advisor explain the why. Now, I've shown this on the channel before. You just have to think about it logically. The friction is where these guys make their money. And central bankers were the first to be informed that they may become irrelevant in New York. But I think since then, guys, I think it's fairly apparent that they've decided to join them, not fight the inevitability of it. And I'll now give you an anecdote. The very, very, very first meeting I had about blockchain was in the Financial Stability Board's Financial Innovation Network. And it was a meeting in the New York Fed in the basement of the New York Fed, a very austere building. And on the one side of the room, there were central bankers, looking like central bankers look. And you can make your own picture as to what a central banker looks like. There's, there's a few, or at least one in the room, and he doesn't look anything like a central banker. But um, <laughs> they looked very much at a piece. Um, and on the other side, uh, there were hoodie-wearing geniuses, lunatics, libertarians, blockchain folk. Libertarians are lunatics, said the official of the European Commission. <laughs> I'm not saying that the libertarians were lunatics. I said they were lunatics and libertarians. Um, and they sort of said, well, we're developing this blockchain and Bitcoin and what have you. And this is the demonstration that there is absolutely no need for central banks. Mm -hmm. This is the end of central banking which I thought was a quite an entertaining and interesting position to put forward, especially at the New York Fed in a room full of central bankers. If we didn't have financial market infrastructure now, imagine Jens walks into this office tomorrow and there's nothing there, an empty building, no computers, no nothing. And Jens's boss, assuming he has a boss, tells him, you have to build infrastructure. I am absolutely convinced that DLT will a very big, a much bigger part of the technolo technology stack Jens will use than he currently does. 
Because of course now they're sitting on huge amounts of legacy infrastructure, which is working okay, so you're not going to throw it overboard. But if you have to start from a, a clean slate, I'm convinced that DLT would be a much, much bigger part of the technology stack. And there you go, guys. A bit of an inside scoop there from uh, somebody here, a representative of the ECB. And if you don't believe him, listen to Daniel Hurst, head of products and services for enterprise payments for the EMA region at FIS Global. They're a global leader in technology and solutions that advance the way the world pays. So these guys are a big player. They also do have a connection to Ripple. And I'm going to play you guys a little clip of this. It is fascinating the way things are changing and how quickly they're changing. This courtesy of Subjective Views. Listen to this. Uh, we've looked at, at some of the impacts, the major impacts of instant payments and the challenges as well. Looking forwards, what yes. do you see as the, the major changes that we should expect within the payment landscape? Yes. Oh, OK. Um, excellent. Well, let, let's, uh, let's baseline the real time. You see there's a transformation about to happen in real time. But let, let's say we're well through that now. So what's, uh, where does it go next? And um, you then, we make all this investment in real time, so we should now jolly well make sure we make some benefit out of that. So I think it's the, the business overlay services really start coming to the fore. Uh, you see that with things like request to pay. Um, I see two great examples of request to pay, one for corporations collecting their money, uh, automating invoicing and asking people to pay and being a lot more proactive and streamlined in that area. Uh, and, and very much seeing the, the the next stage of open banking against real time where you begin to see the shift of card transactions and people getting a lot more comfortable of doing account to account in a frictionless way. So it just, it just shows more and more volume going down these, uh, these rails. So you begin to see the business overlay services. So, so, and, I, and I think the, the point I'm really looking forward to because I work with so many corporate banks, um, so many in that transaction banking space is the improvements that can come through through sending your your sterling transaction to, to to dollars or to Mexican peso or or whatever it might be, and uh, it's it's somewhat inefficient at the moment. Of course, it's you know lots of uh, interbanks involved, uh, long settlement cycles, liquidity issues, costly processes. But we're already seeing the CSMs of Europe team up with the CSMs in the US to provide a link the real-time separate instant link to TCH, link to FedNow. And, um, and straight away then, through the touch of a button, it should be, you know, a payment goes from here over to there far more efficiently, uh, solving that liquidity issue, because liquidity is, is instant as well. And I can see banks really begin to step into that, that area, link, you know, a spider web of real-time. We, we saw a few years back uh, the emergence of Ripple all the great work they were doing with uh, blockchain processes to really bring efficiency to cross-border. I believe that comes again. So you, you know, you're gonna see the emergence of real-time rails, the emergence of more blockchain digital currencies, and it's uh, gonna be fascinating how those things come together. We have seen the emergence of Ripple, all the great work they are doing, and we are going to see it come again. Blockchain technology and digital currencies, of course, becoming the future, and Ripple is ready to perform those transactions. They've been ready for a while. It's just about the legislation now. So I wanted to thank Subjective Views just for bringing that to our attention, guys. Again, the head of products and services at the FIS. This is Daniel Hurst. We are also realizing, even if central banks don't like this idea, they are now being forced or will be to use XRP for cross-border transactions. There is the possibility too that Ripple could replace the Fed. So all this is noise, guys. All this fear, uncertainty, and doubt should not get you worried. For more information on what I'm trading this bull run because accumulating high-flying cryptos is quintessential at this point in time. If you expect to get favorable returns, you can follow my trading journey at patreon.com slash working money channel. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.